platform for prosperity or a calamity waiting to happen. People see offshore oil drilling in starkly different ways. Mm -hmm. The Trump administration wants to see more of it, including off of our beaches. Investigative reporter Chris Horn is drilling down into the risks and rewards. Chris. Anita and Tom, the industry says offshore drilling will pump up our economy with high paying jobs. But a number of local stakeholders and key political leaders are saying, don't drill, baby, don't drill. Somewhere in these waves, there's a battle line over offshore drilling. Trust me, it's there. If you look at the polling data in this area, uh, we still see a majority of people do support this. That is not the overwhelming feedback that I'm receiving or my office is receiving about offshore drilling. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just not, it's not, not even close. Eight years after a catastrophe in the Gulf of Mexico, opponents talk in terms of risk. An entire blue crab uh, age class will be out in the ocean if there's a spill at that time. An entire year's blue crab population is gone. The adverse effect on the military training. They don't need a misadventure uh, with, with contaminated in our water. And supporters talk in terms of reward. About $2.1 billion in economic activity and the creation of about 16,800 jobs in the Hampton Roads area. The executive director of the Virginia Petroleum Council says the Deepwater disaster triggered new laws and standards. As a result, he claims drilling is now much safer. We're light years ahead of where we were before. We have technology now that didn't even exist at the time to cap subsea wells. There have been 50,000 wells drilled in the Gulf since 1950, and we've only had one major incident like this, and so our track record is, is very good. But for Craig Quigley, an offshore rig doesn't have to start burning or leaking to be a problem. He looks at how vital Virginia's waters are to military training. That is very, very important to the armed services. Navy vessels and aircraft, Air Force jets and special ops helicopters all use the offshore ranges to sharpen their skills. Quigley says if they can't do it here, they'll go elsewhere. Once I start populating the waters off the Virginia coast with um, oil and gas drilling rigs, um, I have multiple hazards to navigation. But Morin says the industry knows where to drill and where not to drill. We're only going to drill in the compatible areas, and there's plenty of space in the Atlantic for everybody to get along. Virginia Beach Congressman Scott Taylor is at the forefront of the drilling issue. He says after hearing from residents and key stakeholders in the military, tourism, and the fishing industry, he's opposed to drilling. So are both Senators Mark Warner and Tim Kaine, along with Virginia's governor. Well, do you see any benefit whatsoever for offshore drilling? Not, no, no, absolutely none. The industry says Hampton Roads has an opportunity to create high-paying jobs. The average oil and gas job pays over $100,000 a year. But one of the area's leading developers, Bruce Thompson, says offshore drilling would put too much at stake. Not only our tourism industry, but our overall quality of life. That's absurd and obscene, and I won't stand for it anymore. On that subject of tourism, the Virginia Beach Hotel Association says it firmly opposes offshore drilling. Meanwhile, the Petroleum Council says the benefits would ripple into other parts of our economy. Think construction, real estate, financial services, architecture, engineering, and retail. The U.S. Department of Interior decides whether to sell leases to drillers. That agency is evaluating public input and, of course, will continue to follow that process. Chris Horn, 10 on your side.